Very excited to talk to our next guest, an absolute legend in the boxing game. He's going to be down here soon because we got ourselves a, a big fight week, a crazy event with Floyd Mayweather and Logan Paul. But before that, they also uh, Showtime is going to be debuting their four-part documentary series, The Kings, which is it's it's uh, sounds like a really awesome piece, but it's going to highlight Roberto Duran, Marvin Hagler, Tommy Hearns, Sugar Ray Leonard. Uh, Al Bernstein, thanks for the time. Really appreciate it. Happy to be with you. This is fun. Yeah, thank you for doing this. Uh, how excited are you about uh, this piece that's coming out? I mean, we I know we just had the unfortunate passing of, of Marvin Hagler, so it, it is well time that people are going to, you know, a new audience is going to get a chance to to see their story and, and these guys tied into each other. But how excited are you about this this piece coming out? Yeah, I, you know, I just returned from the uh, the memorial from Marvin Hagler uh it down over in Brockton, Massachusetts. Uh it was a wonderful event. I participated in the program and Tommy Hearns came there, which was lovely. And Ray Leonard sent his message uh, via video. And that kind of, you know, has me even more uh interested in uh seeing this documentary. Now I viewed the 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 four part documentary that as you mentioned is starting on June sixth. It's really a, a very good uh piece of work. And uh you know for those people that lived through the uh uh four kings in the nineteen eighties and uh uh and I of course was intricately involved with it. I called a number of the fights involving those men. Uh it'll be a great reminder of how great these champions are and for younger audiences who maybe only have heard about them or occasionally looked at a youtube version of one of their fights this will be a real uh, revelation for them because they'll really get to learn about these four men uh the struggles they had in in terms to achieve greatness the great moments of exaltation and some of the moments for each of them uh, you know, of difficulty, which every athlete and every person is going to have. So it's, it's pretty remarkable. Yeah, I mean, I've always been a boxing fan. My dad had me watching, you know, the fights when I, you know, when I was a kid. But he always tells me, he's like, for, you know, a person my age who watched this, but you don't understand what a big deal this was to everybody. Like, everybody had their guys. It was the talk of, of sports. And so, look, a, a monster fight can still captivate the country, but right. could, could you, I guess, uh, maybe just paint a picture? Like, how big was the idea in, 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 in the pinnacle of, like, where everything stands in sports back then, what it meant for these guys to fight each other? Like, you know, bigger than, you know, today it's the NFL. Everything's NFL, 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 and Back then, like boxing was 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 such a such a mainstream. It was everything, you know, and everybody had their guy that they wanted to support. No, that's true. The 1980s was probably boxing's best decade ever. Maybe uh, I talked to the great Bill Clancy, who of course was a great broadcaster and a mentor to me and a great trainer. He, I asked him one one morning we were having breakfast. It was before one of the big fights with the Four Kings. I said, you know, is is what I'm experiencing here in here truly great or is it just because i'm here for it and i think it's better than maybe it is he said no this is i've experienced many decades before this in boxing and it's nothing can touch this and so the 80s were extraordinarily special and a lot of that was because some of that anyway was because of these four men uh and what they and what they did and the interesting thing about it is you have to think about this, right? So, yes, boxing was less of a niche sport. It was more of a mainstream sport during that time. And without any social media, right, without certain tools uh, that we now think of as, as mandatory for things to become big, any event involving these four men with each other or many times with others as well was something you stopped what you were doing for. Uh, you 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 wanted to see it. You wanted to dig into it, and um, and be a uh, a part of it. Is uh is there anything um over these last few weeks when the when there was a passing of, of Marvin Hagler that you were glad to see? Like people got a chance to uh, I guess uh, re respect a, a life. Sometimes you know it's unfortunate that when people pass, that's when we seem to remember their great memories. But just what what were you happy to see in the way that he was remembered and 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 uh, and honored in some of his uh, you know great stuff inside outside the ring. 
Yeah, you know, I think what made me most gratified, and I knew Marvin for, you know, very well. Uh, back then, you know, it was a little different covering these fighters. You know, we'd see them. Uh, there was a club in Vegas called Botany's. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we would, you'd see Tommy Hearns and his group over here. You'd see Marvin Hagler and his group over here. Uh, you know, uh, uh, Ray Leonard and his group over here in the club. And you'd be socializing with them. And it was a whole different kind of feel. And so I've known Marvin very well over the years. And one of the things that made me feel really good during this period, even in the sadness of him passing, was that I believe for the most part, uh, everyone that covered his passing got it right. You know, they, 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 they understood what he meant to the sport and how special he was. And, uh, and I just think in general, that made me feel good because you want that to be, you know, to be the case. And I think in recent years, you know, Marvin, Marvin uh, didn't always feel like he got his just due, uh, but I think in recent years he has. So you're coming down here to Miami. Uh, this is a am. a big time a uh, big time event. And Al, it's been a uh, Miami's kind of had this rebirth because of the pandemic and because Florida's more open. It feels like every big boxing event is coming down here. So Floyd Mayweather is uh, is fighting Logan Paul, um, a huge huge event. It's uh, it's 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 actually you know there's a bunch of fights on there. I'm actually looking forward to too. I'm, I'm bummed about the Pascal and Badu Jack fight not happening right. again, but uh, is what it is. I mean, I guess don't take a bunch of PEDs. But I, I was actually yeah. I just went, I just went back and and uh, and watched Mayweather versus McGregor, and you seemed like you were having a lot of fun on that card, man. Like just broadcasting, you you seem to really enjoy the spectacle of it all. What are you expecting here? Not so much, I guess, in the fight because I think we all think Floyd's gonna yeah. win easily. But what do you think this is going to be like, Floyd against a guy who's not a boxer? I view I'm, some people, you know, I, I obviously this isn't for everyone in the sense that there will be boxing purists who will say, I don't like the idea of this. It's it doesn't make sense to me. But you know what? I, as you rightfully pointed out, even in the McGregor thing, I mean, for me, I view these as one offs. I view these as. No different than when uh, Muhammad Ali fought the Japanese wrestler, Aoki. Uh, you know, they're kind of one-off things that, for whatever reason, capture the public's imagination. Uh, and we live in a, an age where a person can be famous for being famous. Yes. Right? That's, yes. <laughs> whatever you want to say about that, that's the era we live in. And the Pauls are perfect examples of that. Now, the interesting thing about them is they love boxing. Mm -hmm. they, being around them and the times I've been around them, and I have been around them several times, not just recently, but they love the sport of boxing. They make a supreme effort to do it. And they bring their own form of audaciousness uh, to, the, to the endeavor. So – along with Floyd Mayweather, just as it was true with McGregor, even though, of course, they were both accomplished combat sports veterans, uh, the, 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 the popularity that each man had and the constituency that they spoke to made it an event where you knew a lot of people were going to tune in and, and buy the pay-per-view. That's kind of what this is about, because Logan Paul has his constituency, Floyd Mayweather has his constituency, and they will get together on it. I, I'm, you know, I try to have fun with the event, uh, and, and, you know, talk about it for what it is, uh, take a peek at the, the boxing part and, and, and try and help people understand what's going on there and, um, and enjoy it. And, and Floyd's, you know, I mean, it's, it's, he's at a point in his career where, you know, you're not expecting him to go in there and fight the best of the best. Um, you know, he's kind of done all of the the top boxing things there are and, and having everybody, you know, captivated to come come watch him box. But, um, you know, like, do you do you expect like what are you expecting in a, in, a, in, a, in a thing like this where a guy's a lot bigger than him, but he doesn't have Floyd's skill set? Do you think you can take anything from the McGregor fight and thinking how Floyd's going to go about this? Or do you have like. No idea what's going to happen. We're all kind of going to be surprised come Sunday. 
Yeah, well, a little bit of both. In a way, anything can happen, uh, you know. Uh, but I think there are some lessons we can learn from the McGregor fight because early in that fight, McGregor had some success. And whether you believe that Mayweather allowed him to have success or he just happened to have some success, whatever it was, uh, I, I'm a firm believer that Floyd Mayweather understands this is a show. And I don't know, he's, yes, he is facing a much bigger man and all the rest of that. Whether he could create a knockout early, I don't even know. I don't expect that. I certainly expect there to be uh, uh, rounds involved here. I think Logan Paul is just going to attack. I know a lot of the people he's worked with in boxing, and they've talked about his efforts and what he's done. And, and they say that he's improved dramatically over the top, course of time. Now, what does that mean against a person who used to be the best pound for pound fighter in the world and is what four or five years away from a couple, from, from actually being a competitor uh, and, and will probably train minimally for this fight, you know, train. Well, yes, we'll see. I mean, but he got the hat taken from him. Maybe he, found, maybe, maybe, he maybe he's got a new fire. Improve on his, on his hat retrieval skills. <laughs> That's, that may be a key element for him. Um, I don't know what it means. Um, we're going to find out though on, uh, next, this coming Sunday and, uh, and to go along with, as you pointed out, we've got some other boxing matches. We did have Jean Pascal and, uh, Bobby Jack in a rematch of their light heavyweight fight, which would have been terrific. Uh, we've got a, a different fighter in there against Jack who, who will be uh, very, uh, he's a good fighter and he'll, he'll give, he'll give Jack a good go. Uh, and we've got, um, Jay, uh, Jared Hurd against uh, Luis Jared Hurd, uh, Arias. Yeah, thank you. I forgot for a second. No, it's all good. Jared Hurd returning against Jose Arias uh, in, a, in a match. That's kind of important because we want to see what Jared Hurd is all about. So there'll be some, you know, traditional boxing matches on it on the card. And I, we couldn't live, of course, without Ocho Cinco making it. <laughs> That's appearance. right. Sweet feet. Yep. Uh, he's, 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 you uh, know, without a, how could we have this card without a wide receiver? That's not possible. I've actually seen the guy that he's fought. I saw him at a bare knuckle fight down here. Uh, he lost to a, he actually lost to a buddy of mine. But I was like, man, he's really doing this. Uh, Ocho Cinco is stepping <laughs> in the ring. I can't believe it. I can't. That's I can't. wild. So you got a little you got a little personal history with this. Uh, it's just I no I I don't actually know like Chad Chad's from down here, but so like everybody's gonna be intrigued. I think watching him, he is beloved down here. Uh, from sure. Liberty City, but I, I was curious who they were going to. I'm like, is he going to fight another athlete? And then uh, it ended up being some guy who has some bare knuckle experience. Uh, not great bare knuckle experience, but I saw no. I saw that I was like, oh, I've, I looked up his uh, his like you know whatever his record. I was like, I actually remember seeing this guy fight at the 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 Fort Lauderdale Convention <laughs> Center. So you're you're prepared. Yeah, sure. For what I'm, I'm prepared for anything this week. I don't know what it's going to be. I because yeah. I was there. Uh, I was there for the 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 whole hat. I was Al. It was four feet away from uh, from Mayweather when the hat got taken and all hell broke loose and his SWAT you were team. were right there, Derek. Oh like my God, yeah, man. It was it was and he was heated. I you know I think he was. He, I mean, unless Floyd's the the greatest thespian of our time, he did not seem pleased and. Uh, you know, I think it probably sold a lot of uh, a lot of people that, on buying yeah, the fight. Yeah, that's probably a perfect example of the goofiness uh, and the audaciousness that these guys have. They have a sense of comic timing, if you will. Yeah, and they have a sense of of what will go viral and what won't. It, uh, it's a unique skill. I'm not, you know, it's it's probably not the same as being a good neurosurgeon. Okay, I'll grant you that, but it's a skill. And it's uh, it's fascinating, and uh, and and he used it in that instance to to create to do something weird and audacious that nobody thought he would do. Uh, if I could just get a couple um, outside of this card, uh, just because sure. uh, I you know it's just an honor to talk to you, um, Manny Pacquiao returning at 42 years old to fight Errol Spence. Uh, uh, you know, Errol's tremendous. I, I I got to go see his fight against Mikey Garcia in person, um, but I mean. You know the idea that Manny's taking on a guy who's as good as him at his age. Are you shocked by it? Uh, do you? And what do you think a win of this match? Like, if he gets a win at his age against a guy like Errol Spence, what do you think that's going to mean for his legacy? If it could get well, any better, you know, the Manny Pacquiao legacy is. You know, he became a Hall of Famer back in the early two thousands when he was fighting at the lower weight classes, and he and Marco Antonio Barrera. Uh, 
Juan Manuel Marcos and Eric Morales created their own version of the four Kings. Yeah. And let me tell you, they were all great hall of fame fighters and they created a better body of work than the real four Kings did. The actual fights that they had, every one of them was a war. Every one was fantastic. So that cemented his Hall of Fame legacy. Then he moved forward and did all these other things in, in, the, in the intervening years. But a win over Earl Spence would be, I think, so uh, dramatic for Manny Pacquiao that it would forever cement his place as one of the all-time greats. Uh, I don't know that he doesn't need to do that to be a, a, a Hall of Fame fighter and an all great, all-time great fighter, but this would take it to another level. And the fascinating thing about this, it does demonstrate Pacquiao's willingness, which he's had his whole career, to fight anybody. I mean, look, we've forgotten, you know, a year or so ago, he fought uh, over a little over, over that time, he fought Keith Thurman. Yep who we all thought every, in boxing, everyone thought, well, Manny Pacquiao is at this age, can't go near one of the bigger, tougher welterweights. Very close fight, but he beat Keith Thurman, which is staggering, you know? Uh, and so it, it is an intriguing match that he chose him. He's, he is 42. He has, does have the layoff uh, to deal with. Uh, but, uh, one of the things that what I think might be surprising about this fight is one of the blueprints that Sean Porter showed uh, in his fight with uh, uh, Spence was the idea of boxing and punching, darting in and out, using lateral movement, attacking and not attacking, and creating a, a kind of a, a, a very um, uh, awkward uh, attack mode. Manny Pacquiao is capable of doing that, even at age 42. We've seen some evidence of that. So he could be a very interesting puzzle for Errol Spence to figure out. Errol Spence is obviously a fantastic fighter, uh, and they will combine for a match that will be of great interest to everybody. Well, I really appreciate you spending some time with us. Uh, go, guys. Uh, it's, he's, yeah, Albert's he's got a, himself a busy week. He's coming down to South Florida. Enjoy Miami while you're down here. By the way, uh, it's uh, the city's gonna be fired up for this. I think we we like we're an event town now. We do. It doesn't yeah. matter what you know. If it's the place to be, Miami will be there. So you got. I plus- agree. I, I agree. I think there's probably this is probably the perfect place for for an interesting event like yes. this because you know you guys you guys embrace the interesting. And yep. That's you know that's the and and we'll see you know how it turns out but uh I, I think that's good and I have not been to down to Miami for a little while so uh it's a pleasure for me to come and visit your city. Yeah so uh check out June sixth it's a Sunday fight so uh Logan Paul and Floyd Mayweather live on paper but before that you got the Kings they the first of four part of their documentary Highlight Roberto Duran, Marvin Hagler, Tommy Hearns, and Ray Leonard. That goes on at 8 o'clock on Showtime. Thank you so much for spending some time with us. Really appreciate it. Good to be with you.